one of the most difficult and critical questions is which size of glider is the best for you specifically. So there are many factors and it's important to be on the smallest size that is right for your age, weight, altitude, and most importantly, skill level. Because it doesn't matter if you weigh 360 pounds, you could literally fly an extra, 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 extra small. I actually set the world record flying tandem on a 14 square meter. 14 square meters, tandem. So the gliders are designed to support 2,500 to 3,000 pounds. So you're not overloading any glider by adding weight. Because think about it, if you weigh, say, 250 pounds with you and the paramotor together, and you pull 10 Gs, well, how much do you weigh? 2,500 pounds. So you're not overloading a glider. They're all designed to be able to take that weight. The question is, is more of the performance and dynamics of that glider. As you go to a smaller glider, you generally get more speed, better handling, and more stability, which is all great and very beneficial to safety if you have the skill level to be able to deal with that extra performance, better handling, and speed. So there's pieces to that. So which glider size is right for you really shouldn't be a choice that you're making. That should be a choice you work out with the best instructor in the world who just trained you, who just verifies and tells, you know, hey, this is where we're at. Um, at super training, you don't just fly one size of glider. It's basically the only school in the world where you're actually developing skills. So as your skills progress, you start dropping glider size after glider size after glider size. So like one of our students who set a world record knocking out 530 flights by the end of his 10 days of super training, he started from never having touched a glider. The very first size he flew was an extra large. Then he worked down size after size after size. By the end of his 10 days, he was flying an extra, 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 extra small which is only 16 square meters, and he weighed 205 pounds plus the paramotor. Now, we could totally fly that glider tandem if we want, because the Dominator is so efficient and the flat top has so much power, it has the performance to do that, no problem. So the question is about skill level. How much speed can you deal with? Now, why is speed important? Well, what happens if you're up flying and you took off in zero wind and all of a sudden, wham, you got 35 mile an hour wind. Gust front. If you fly long enough, you're going to get hit with higher winds, rotor, trashy air, mechanical turbulence, thermals, all kinds of stuff. And the best way to defeat that is to have a smaller dominator where you have the performance to cut through those higher winds and the stability to prevent collapses as much as possible in the most violent conditions. So many, many factors. How do you pick which glider size is right for you? You don't. You have me do it. You have your instructor, the guy that knows what he's doing and has that vast experience because you don't know everything that can and will go wrong and what's going to happen to you. So it makes no sense for the guy who's the newbie to be picking out his glider size. That's what you want the expert to do for you. You don't just go, oh, well, this one's rated for this, blah, blah, blah. Those ratings don't mean diddly squat. That is more about paragliding. And keep in mind, if you pull 10 Gs, you weigh, say, 2,500 pounds. So even a glider that's rated for blah, 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 is good for over 2,500 pounds because that's its working load. That's not its braking strength. Gliders can literally pick up a truck. You're not gonna break a glider these days. They're extremely well tested and built. So picking out the right size glider is what you want to do with the best instructor in the world who has that experience to know exactly what's gonna happen to you and how to best stack the odds in your favor. 
So if you're 43 years old and you weigh 200 pounds and you live at 4,700 feet and in an area where there's more wind, then you add in your skill level by the end of super training when you graduate and then I will help you pick the correct glider size for that, which is very nice because it makes no sense to put such a huge critical responsibility on the newbie when it should be the choice of the expert trying to help stack the odds in your favor. So how do you choose the correct glider size for you? You know, you let me do it at the end of super training. Once you graduate super training, then we can pick the size. So even if you order a whole package of gear and the training all combined and get your package deal, best deal in the world, but then we can pick the glider size right before it ships, after you've been through training, once we know where your skill level is at, and then I work with you, we talk about it and discuss where you're at, all the different factors of where you're flying, what you're doing, and all those pieces, and I help you pick the absolute best glider. Plus, you're not stuck with any glider you get through me. I make it very simple so you can trade that glider back in or easily exchange it for a different size. So as your skills continue to progress, you can swap glider size or exchange so you're not stuck with anything you get through Paraglider Mall, through us. It just, we're gonna try and make it as easy as possible for you to always have the gear that stacks the odds of your safety as high as possible in your favor. So the glider size you choose is absolutely critical. Now, I'm about 180 pounds. I live at about 5,000 feet in a desert. What do I fly? An extra, extra small dominator. That's what I normally fly most of the time, but it also depends on conditions. Uh, and there's more variables. It's also nice to have a couple different sizes because if I go out and there's a bit more wind, I might take a 4XS, which is like a 16 square meter, or maybe even a 5XS, which is a 14 square meter glider. And if I have less wind, then I might fly, or no wind, I might just fly the extra, extra small, which is 19.75, so it's almost 20 square meters. So it does somewhat depend on the conditions I'm aiming at for that day, but there's lots of factors. So having just one glider makes it even more difficult for me to always choose the, you know, the size that's gonna be the best for the all around for you. Um, but it is nice if you can afford the two glider option or even three glider option, then I can give you a range and then you can have more gliders to choose from based on what you're doing and where you're doing it and what those conditions are generally at that time. Um, so there's a lot of those pieces as well as as you develop those skills and get to where you can fly a 4XS without any oscillation, doing perfect launches and landings, foot drags and landings, then you're also worked up to tandem uh, instructor level where you can then take passengers and so then we factor that in as well which also has another choice of glider size so again there's so many factors you make it very very simple you come take super training and you let the most experienced the guy that has the skills who's been through everything pick the glider and size specifically for you at the end of training so that we stack the odds in your favor. That's the smartest way to do it. Not have Joe Jimmy Bob newbie trying to figure out what glider he wants. It's not how it works. You want what glider I recommend for you because then you have all of my experience working in your favor and I didn't even charge you for it. All that advice is free. You call me up, we talk about glider size, you buy a glider through me, and that hour or so I spent talking to you, I charge you nothing. I'm just sharing my vast experience to help stack the odds of your safety in your favor. That's a smart way to do it. It's the right way to do it. Let's go flying and be smart doing it.